You do it now, so it's Yeah. You've been through here before. All right. So welcome to the last talk of the day. Um, just a quick announcement. You guys have seen the video crew. They're in both the tracks recording all the talks. Um, they're pretty much caught up for the day. So they're making the, the DVDs as we speak. So pretty much when a talk is done, they have a copy of it. So if you missed a talk because you were in the different track or there's a talk you really liked you'd want to see again, uh, you can pick up single talks there. You can also buy the whole con if you want to. So visit them in the vendor room. And then we have the uh, Qualcomm sponsored party later on tonight at 666 4th Street. Uh, it is an unlabeled door, so don't be looking for signage. Actually, unlabeled doors stand out a lot more than labeled doors do. So look for the unlabeled door um, around the corner. I, it will probably have a guy out front, um, but that's where you go at 10 o'clock tonight. And other than that, enjoy your dinner in the gas lamp. Hope that uh, you find a good place for dinner. And I guess without much more, I think that's the end of the announcement. So please, let's welcome Viz to the stage for um, his Shodan talk. Sweet. Hey, I'm short. All right. Hey, guys. I'm Viz. Um, I talk about fun stuff. Um, I, I've presented at several conferences. You may have seen a version of this before if you've been following me around. Um, here is a long page detailing all of my credentials and degrees and diplomas and certs, ha 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 ha. So, today, I take you on safari. We are going to the internet. So, who here has not heard of Shodan? Oh, sweet, and so, we're good. <laughs> um, TCP banners, this should hopefully be nothing new. No, okay. Um, Metasploit, again, probably not, sh shouldn't be a surprise. Armitage, anybody use Armitage? No, yes, okay. Python devs in the room? No? Um, okay, so um, in short, Shodan is kind of like Google, but for TCP banners. You can find really cool stuff and um, talk to it with whatever you want. Um, so uh, in my B-Sides LA talk, I mentioned how you can take results from Shodan and pipe them directly into Metasploit. And then from there, usually it's one click to shells. So doing this is very simple. You just need to find an interesting query. And believe me, there are many of them, and they are, sh they are shorter than you think. So my first foray into this was webcams, many of them, by the tens of thousands. And uh, this one um, was uh, found a, because a friend of mine mentioned that his employer uses the same system, so I thought it'd be funny to search for it on Shodan, and believe me, there are, I think there are hundreds of this one online. Um, so in perusing around and choosing what cameras to look at, I noticed that the camera in the top left seemed very similar to the rest of the system, and I thought to myself, there's Wait, I can watch the guy watching the cameras. <laughs> okay, so who watches the watchers? <laughs> Me. Right? So you can get, you know, mix and match, right? It's a, it's a mixed bag. So you got skater gear on webcams, you got German gas pump stuff on webcams. But for the vast majority of them, you know, vast majority of the time, webcams tend to be boring as hell. Um, you're looking at an empty living room or a dark garage or a, you know, eh. Imagine this times 500 pages. It's boring. Um, I found this thing. This was kind of cool. I saw this. I was, oh, cool. I'm telling it into it. It's got creds, but it's showing me stuff, and I don't have to log in. That's kind of neat. You rely on what? The T2000, rely on what? Eh? So I did a little bit of Googling, and it's a hydrogen fuel cell listening on Telnet. Um, Sweet, looks industrial. Reliance modular cartridge approach normally operates with six cartridges connected to a common bus. Each cartridge supplies a nominal power supply or power of 200 watts. Hmm, that's kind of cool. I uh, did a little bit more Googling, found a bunch of documents. They use it in a lot of dot .mil applications. Oh, that's kind of cool. They're very liberal about putting this, this, this stuff on the internet where anybody can find it. Um, here's how you use it. This is how you connect the, your um, rectifiers and your, your DC bus and all that fun stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, how do you find one of these things, you know, assuming you're not on Safari, right? Um, you find it there, apparently. It's right in the documentation, too. Look for a building like this, and it has this thing in it. Cool. Um, I kept looking around. Um, found wind farms. Um, you can, you, uh, the, the big propellers that generate electricity have web servers on them. Why somebody thought putting a web server on one of these things would be a good idea is beyond me, but they're on the internet, and they're listening, and you can talk to them if you feel like it. Um, this was... Um, a SCADA system attached to what I think is a church or a cathedral. Um, this SCADA system controlled all the lighting, HVAC, and alarms for the whole building. 
No creds. You hit it with a browser. You own the place. Sweet. Um, a lot of these places I've noticed conveniently give you a floor plan. So if you're not familiar with the place uh, that you found randomly on the inter internet, you can be very quickly because they tell you what temperature the rooms are and things like that. Uh, power meters are all, also a lot of fun um, in some cases uh, like this, which these things are particularly interesting because they give you trend graphs over time, uh, which are really fun. So you can go into like full on creeper mode and if you wanted to do like crazy OSN stuff, you can sit and watch these things and you can, you can tell when devices get turned on, when devices get turned off, you can tell what, you know, oh, they turn on their air conditioner, they can turn on their washer, like, I mean, assuming this is a house, I, mean, I had no indication of what this, what was actually connected to this thing that was um, registering these graphs, but yeah, it gets more interesting. Um, you can, industrial heat pumps, like, these are the types of things that, that heat air in, in buildings, like, potentially this one. Um, in some of these smaller systems, you can control the temperature of the vents there. You can see on the right. Um, you, can, you can modify settings. You can change stuff. You can make people freeze or sweat, whatever you feel like. They get bigger. Um, some of these things have turbines in them and valves that you can control. This one's kind of interesting. It's got three water heaters on the right. That's kind of cool. Can you control the water heaters? Did anybody see that Mythbusters episode? <laughs> Um, someday I hope this is a problem I get to deal with. Private residences that are so big they have their own skating equipment monitoring their, their guest rooms. Like, I wish I want these problems. These are problems I want. Um, and again with the trending data, these guys really like their charts, which is crazy because like, this dude's house, I know what temperature his stuff is, I know when he comes home, when he, it's, it gets really creepy. Um, you get the solar water heaters that you, know, you put the, 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 the little black system on your roof and it pumps the water through the system and it goes to your pool or what have you. You can control it. Same deal. You can mess with the valves and you can turn stuff on and off. Um, anybody recognize that thermostat? No? Maybe see it at work. Maybe see it in hotels. Um, last year? Yeah, it was last year. Um, I was sat in a, in a traffic school class on a Saturday. And for the life of us, we could not figure out how to make the room not fucking cold. And after I found this, months later, I thought to myself, there must have been some 15-year-old kid who found this on the same network that was sad, and the two rooms over going, ha, 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 click, 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 ha, 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 cold. And here we are, he's watching us down the hallway, like, trying to turn the heat up, and he's like, nope, dodge JPEG. Um, yeah. Uh, the power systems get more interesting because you can hook them together, kind of like Devo hats, and uh, you can have... A system like this that's um, aggregating results from a variety of different power meters or homes or apartment buildings and stuff like that. You know, it, it, it's not by itself particularly scary, but once you start stacking it with other things and start um, doing um, results over time, then it starts getting creepy. You can start, you can tell, oh, it must be cold over there. Oh, it must be warm over there. Everybody's running their AC or their heat or whatever. It's kind of fun. These larger industrial systems is kind of neat. Um, these things talk to relays, and these things are also talking on Ethernet. So this thing has a web server on it. You talk to the web server, and you can talk to the relays, and the relays can control whatever you want. Um, this is what the web interface looks like. Uh, this thing is, uh, what does it look like? Uh, a couple boilers, um, a water heater, um, some chillers, some other stuff. You can see where the, if you went through with a pen, maybe you could go and figure out where the flow was. This is. One of these things where we're starting to get to contents being under pressure, like like big pressure, and if you mess with this stuff, maybe you could do some stuff that's kind of scary. In other iterations of this talk, I talked about the fire sale thing from Die Hard 4, kind of maybe. Um, overall, security is a horrific joke. Um, this is a this is me in VI opening a file that came off of a controller of some sort for power meters. Um, the web interface hands several uh, files to the browser and says please type in a password and one of the files that it hands the browser is some binary thing so I opened the binary thing in VI. I'm not a I'm not a reverser I am I wish I was as lead as like Frank 2 and virus I'm not but I can open it in VI and if you can't see the password it's in clear text and if you still can't see the password it's right there. <laughs> <coughs> Anyhow so successful Safari is successful so far hmm? Um, but what now? Like, okay, so this is fun stuff, but what, what of this is actionable? So let's play Steve Irwin and let's stock some stuff, shall we? So level one, simple recon. You find a camera, it's got some stuff on it. What can you do? That's kind of nice. No, that's kind of nice. So you got, you got a, a, a stalking room, you have a front desk, you have some cars in the parking lot, maybe you can get in on those license plates. Oh, 
they've left their logo on the front door. So take a screenshot, flip it around, maybe gain some interesting intel that way. So some quick observations, I was using a tool called Chrome Ultimate Flag, which is really neat. It'll tell you um, the city, state, any kind of geolocation information it can get based solely on the, on the IP address. So normally that'll help you narrow it down to at the very least a city, which is generally all you need. So you take the screenshot, you flip it, and there's their company name. So you know what city they're in based on their IP address, and you know what the company name is, so you go straight to Google Maps. And there they are. This is the closest I could get with Google, to, Google, to this company using Google Maps. Oh, that's kind of fun. Okay, so that's just some fun recon just for exercise and playtime. So level two, interactions, right? So this is interesting because this was a, a, um, uh, an eventuality of me posting a bunch of webcams online, like several thousand. Um, I did a search similar to this, except I targeted only webcams, and I found thousands and thousands of pub publicly available webcams. Um, so <laughs> people I know online decided that it would be fun to find one of these places, call them, and social engineer them into doing stuff on camera. How they called a pizza place and said, Hi, we're randoms from the internet. We're watching you work, do fun shit for us on camera, and they didn't get the cops called? I have no idea. But this is amazing. Like, everybody that says social engineering is like bogus or whatever, no. Just no. This, they did this for fun. And this was like, hi, we're watching you at work. No, we're not your business owners. We're randoms from the internet. So, and it went on. They, they have like a whole, it just, it went on for like days. Like, I lack the expletives, right? Okay, so that's fun, right? But let's find some bigger stuff, right? Let's find the big ones. So, massive coolers. What's this? This is a SCADA system that has what appears to be 14 massive evaporative coolers connected to it at once. You can control all 14 from this system. I am not an industrial dude. I've never worked in a warehouse environment or a massive industrial setting. I don't know what stuff is associated with an environment that has 14 massive chillers. They look like this. They're connected to buildings. A meat packing plant, something food related. I have no idea. That's where they keep the zombies. I don't know. But sweet, yeah. Um, some of these things, this is crafty. Um, some of these things will make you run a Java applet. And then when you, when you hit yes to run the Java applet, it will record the name that your computer calls itself, right, your host name and it'll put it in the system so you can see who's connected to it. So here's some OSINT fun for you. You connect to a public, publicly available system like this, and you can see the names of the people that normally admin it. So for those social engineers in the crowd, this is gold. Um, anybody familiar with Liebert? The big, they make big batteries or big, yeah. So you can, you, can, um, you can hit them with a browser, and you can put them in test mode. What happens when you put a UPS in test mode? It turns the battery off. Anybody want to mess with some data centers? You just turn off the whole data center. Bye, guys. Um, some of these things um, have VNC touch panels. You can VNC in and click, and it's like touching the panel, right? So that's fun. Um, I don't remember what this system is, but it's measuring fluid in the 2,000 to 2,500 something. I'm guessing gallons a minute, something gallons an hour. I don't know. So the Safari is getting kind of weird, right? There's some crazy hacks on this thing. Well, it gets a little worse. Meet Ilon. So Ilon, Ilon is uh, it's a, made by a company called Echelon, and it, it's m used to manage what are called lawn work networks. And this was news to me. I had to research all this as I went. So lawn works is what existed for SCADA level stuff before TCP was around. This was like, think of like IPX and before IPX. It's kind of like that. Um, so that wasn't good enough. So they put a web server on it and put it on the internet. And then you can get to it on the internet. This particular system, if you see this long list of stuff on the left column, um, there's a couple of IP addresses and things like that. Um, this is one controller that manages many controllers. And I don't speak, I think this was Finnish or Swedish. I'm like, I don't, so I started Googling around. I'm like, well, what, what looks interesting? Gigantium, okay, that's cool. Let's Google Gigantium, what's that? It's kind of like the convention center. It's this big place that you put people for events. Under that, basketball floor? I don't, I don't know what that is. Um, gymnastics, there's like a wooden floor. Under that floor is an ice rink. You can defrost the ice rink if you felt like it. Like, that's an interesting thing to say you can do. Like, oh, you lead Hacksaw and defrost your ice rink. Okay. Right? Sure. Why not? We'll just bring back the 90s. 
Um, could they conveniently put a, a schematic of their facility on their site for you so that your nefariousness can be targeted specifically to wherever, wherever it is that you want to be nefarious? Um, one of the other things there was a place called Hedebo Strand Camping. It's a, one of these places that you go vacation, they give you a cottage. And the bottom frame there, you can see on the left, um, a bunch of black rectangles that's like one massive solar array on top of one of their buildings that presumably is a cafe or something to that effect. Um, they had the Ilon systems monitoring all that solar stuff, so that's kind of cool. Uh, another one, um, or yeah, I guess it was Swedish. Um, another thing, another place that does cottages for vacations, like this place actually looks pretty cool, I'd consider going there. So like, I can control the power, the lights, the HVAC, the ice skating rink, the garage door, water pressure um, stuff, boilers, your AC, of everything in one town in, I think it was, no, it was Denmark, sorry, not Sweden. In Denmark, I can control all of that from one web interface that's unprotected on the internet. <laughs> what? So, and it doesn't stop there. All you people that do dev on phones, and your phones are on the internet, people can find your stuff on the internet using these tools. Um, if, you if you go to Shodan and you search for Android phone or Android server, you will find dozens of these. These are people that, and while clever, it's kind of silly, they'll set up a secondary phone or a throwaway phone or something. Like for the people that went to DEF CON and got the Ninja phone, I could see something like this set up with one of them. You put this thing on the Ninja phone, you tape the Ninja phone to your hamster cage or whatever, whatever it is you, you want to watch, and you put this tool on it. And this tool basically uses the camera on the Android phone as a webcam. And you can hit it with a browser and it pops a Java applet, and you can eavesdrop on the room, or you can turn the, the, the flash on to illuminate stuff. So you want to make some people in some other places in the country crap their pants as you turn the light on on them at three in the morning and watch them flip out. So there's that, so, but you know, again, so by itself, not necessarily scary, but there are phones on the internet and you can find them using these tools. So like your phones aren't really safe either. Stoplights, um, this system is called Econolite. You can tell it into this and it does control stoplights. Um, it's a big deal because of that warning you see in the center there, danger, do not use while controller is being used for traffic control or serious or serious damage, injury, or death may occur. So basically, same deal with like putting stuff in test mode, you can do that to stop lights. You put a stop light in test mode, sparks fly. Hmm? Fun stuff. Um, auto plate, anybody, ever, anybody here ever dealt with those red light cameras? I bet you guys love red light cameras. Mm. Yeah, so can anybody point out a, a hilarious piece of text in this screenshot? Oh, by the way, no creds of any kind, it doesn't even ask you to log in, you tell that in and it gives you this. So you see the asterisks there? The second asterisk, wait. Basic VES with no security. That's the one. It's the second asterisk from the top. Basic VES with no, no security. And um, yesterday at five, before I came here for the reception, I was messing around with these systems and I have a piece of code that I'll be talking about shortly. Um, this is the front end for it. Um, same sort of deal, just a oh, dinky web server. Okay, cool, there's an there's a internet-facing um, intersection somewhere on, on, online um, that has cameras and takes pictures of license plates um, that anybody can go look at. Like, these columns scroll live. This is a Java applet that pops. You go to this website, you hit watch the cameras, and it will, this is the creepy part, it doesn't just take pictures of people that run red lights. It, take picture, it takes pictures of everybody. Every single car that goes through the intersection. It, and, and you can see like, um, it gives you a confidence rating of how confident it thinks of it got the, the license plate read. So the text will scroll and then the images will scroll. Because it, you know, it gets the picture, it does some stuff on the picture and then gives you this. So no creds, no encryption. You can just hit this thing with a browser and watch. So um, the hilarious part here is that you can tell it to send the pictures to a different FTP server. <laughs> like, should you feel so inclined? Um, so Dactronics is another really fun one, but I gotta give these guys props because no matter all of my poking and prodding and searching, I was not able to find login information for anything anywhere about these guys. There's no default passwords on the internet or nothing. Like, these guys are solid, so that's pretty cool. But Dactronics, these are the guys that make 
the big fancy signs that go over freeways and before they go before tunnels, but they are available via Telnet and they are available via web browser. So presumably if somebody were to find some sort of hole or if they were to leak some sort of information or some document were to find its way to the internet, like these things are potentially vulnerable. Zombies ahead, bring them out. Yeah, so bring the zombies. So rugged com sound familiar to anybody? That's been in the news recently a little bit, rugged com, no. So <clears throat> for those sysadmins and infosec types in the room, Anybody want to take a crack at what these passwords are? Uh, no? Yes, you guessed right. <laughs> so whatever, whatever brilliant web developer designed this tool or this, uh, this uh, web interface, the web interface transmits the password to you in the clear and then obfuscates it. <laughs> so if you view source, you can see the password. So this I used, um, it was some tool on, Google, on Chrome or Firefox that's like deobfuscate or whatever. There's like well, a tool that it'll, it'll remove all the asterisks and all, all the fields. Um, so there's that. So this was interesting. Malware on Safari. This was new to me. I'm playing on the internet. I got my fancy pith helmet going and I'm driving around in my Land Rover and I'm like, oh, what the hell is this crap? This looks like some 90s defacement you'd see somebody do in MS Paint. I'm like, this does not look legit to me. Ha, 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 keep going, man. Took a screenshot, put it on Twitter, ha, 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 lols, kept whatever. Uh, I get a message back from a guy. He says, no, no, that's probably safe to run. You can, you can run that. That's, that job is safe. You don't have to sweat it. I'm like, yeah, it's your botnet, isn't it? You just want to know. No. And he goes, no, I promise. I'm familiar with the system. It's not a big deal. You can run this. Okay. So I spin up VMware, and I load this thing up, and it looks like this. Okay, well, that's not so scary. Kilowatt? Um, okay, uh, what is this thing exactly? So I started looking up some, of, it's all in French. So I'm like, these are turbines. Production, Julian Air, turbine, de la blah, some other stuff, kilowatts, puissance, T2. I'm like, this is, this is a French hydroelectric plant. What? I was then sent this, which is a translated a translated article from Google, which I'll read a short excerpt from. Um, uh, at what point of the interval? Um, some seniors even said the fear of their lives when some electrical appliances began to crack. How to live next to a dam if you do not know what can happen. Yesterday, a meeting was organized in Fumel in the presence of all the authorities to take stock of the situation. And very soon, it seems the appearance of criminal acts Friday has passed. This dam is plugged into the internet and it's been owned before and it flooded people. <laughs> So I put this on the internet, and this, this guy I've been having this conversation with, um, I, went, I took this screenshot, and I sent it to him, and I said, I think this might be serious. I found something interesting. These are kilowatts, and there's four digits here. So these, these are megawatts I'm reading. And he goes, yeah. He responds, and this was funny for multiple reasons. He responds, and he says, you'll be hearing from some interesting people tomorrow. I'm like, sure, okay. Whatever their tough guy, random dude on the internet tells me interesting people. No, DHS called me the next morning. No, I, I woke up. Ring, ring. Oh, hello. Hi, this is Anthony from ISC Cert. We're a divi di division of DHS. <laughs> <laughs> what? So, yeah, he basically explained, no, don't worry. We're not going to haul you away in cuffs. It's fine. We're a division of the government that hilariously has been assembled to chase stuff like this down and fix it. And I'm like, I feel for you guys. I'm buying you scotch. Um, <laughs> So yeah, there's, there's a group of people that you can report this stuff to and they will say, hi, we're the government and chase people down and shut them off. To which I'm like, I applaud you guys, that's amazing. So he's the one that sent me the, the article for this, but you know, pull, put that later, I'm behind. Also, that UI was built in front page, which is why it looked like it came from fucking MS Paint. Yes, front page on SCADA. And somebody paid for it and then put it on the internet. What the fuck? <coughs> Anyhow, Ubisoft, you got my hair completely wrong and I would never wear that coat, you. Anyway, satellite systems are online. Um, these are less interesting because they appear to just be serial connections. You're basically doing um, TCP to some box and this box talks to a satellite dish and the satellite dish does serial up to the satellite and then back down and it's like a really fancy modem. Cool, but meh. I was, I was hoping to find more interesting stuff. NAS storage arrays. These are really fun because 
they're either completely open or generally you can find default passwords just by Googling and what good are your super secure backups if your super secure backup server is on the internet with default creds? Like, what? Um, car washes. I had no idea you could, you can tell that into a car wash. We live in the future. <laughs> My God. So this is funny because you can, you can, for safety reasons, shut the car wash. I, I don't know if you can do this while somebody's in it or not, but this would be really funny. You can shut the car wash and you can turn the alarm on and you can make it squirt soap and you can... I am 10 years old, I'm sorry, but... This one was really fun, humidifiers, like gigantic, ridiculous, like refrigerator sized industrial humidifiers. Okay, vapor, what can you do with vapor? Well, the burn ward in the hospital really likes these guys, apparently. Um, and they have a bunch of marketing material that when I found out the, the brand, dry steam here, the brand, I did some Googling, found their uh, marketing material on the internet, and you, you plug the internet directly to the thing, like the board, like this. Um, they also brag about that their, their machines are used by factions of the government, are in the White House, and um, are in almost every major hospital in the country. Good to know, right? Uh, emergency telco gear, this is fun stuff. This is like crazy failover stuff for 911 and first responders and people of that nature that need to do VoIP stuff. Um, these things open on the internet, no creds, you can log in, here's the interface, you can look at call logs. A little weird, you'd think that like 911 people would take this stuff more seriously, I guess not. Um, I found this, it was, a, it was on some really ancient piece of networking equipment that like seriously to this day is still online and still routing packets. I'll give you people a moment just to read it. Tell me when you see the hilariousness. Oh yes. Support for Netscape 6, hell yes. Um, I didn't know that you could tell that into speakers or hit speakers with a web browser either. This was pretty cool. Um, and yes, you can give them an MP3, and yes, they will play it. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. Gangnam style. Oh, oh yeah. Um, so let's say you're in a big fancy hotel. Let's say the big fancy hotel has a really fancy bar in it. And let's say this really fancy bar is a popular place people go to drink expensive champagne. They take it seriously, because there's a champagne alarm in this system. Um, this is the system that monitors, it's, I guess the HVAC system is plugged into the giant refrigerator where they keep all the expensive booze. Um, here's the layout of their stuff and all the readings. And I don't know, like those are, the one in the bottom left hand corner gets my attention specifically because if a cooler is big enough to have places that read the temperature in, in two different places in the cooler, it's gotta be a pretty big cooler. Um, so based on that size, if there's champagne in it, that's a lot of dollars. So you want to make somebody really, really go gray in the hair or like hang themselves, or you shut the cooler off. All your fancy champagne goes bye-bye. Um, or maybe you just want to make the news out of it. Safaris are fun. Um, so say you're on safari and you find stuff. Like you find a lot of stuff. Like what do you do when you find 50,000 results and you actually want to look at them all? I mean, the interface, the web browser, or the, the web interface for Showdown is, is, is elegant and nice, but it shows you 10 results. So you're going to right click, open a new tab, right click, open a new tab, right click, open a new tab for like two days. I, I did, but I'm weird. Um, so you screenshot all the things, right? So there, there exists software. You can point it at a website. You will go to the website. It will take you a screenshot and it'll give you, here's a JPEG. That's cool. So I did. Um, 50,000 sites by hand sucks. Uh, this is a search that I did for a keyword Niagara. Just looking for the word Niagara and saying, bring back all the screenshots you can, you, can, uh, you can get me and sort by size. And the interesting ones tend to float to the top because when you use the PN PNG as a file format, um, I don't know if it's compressed or not. I don't, it might be. Um, but the interesting ones float to the top, the ones with more color and stuff going on. So you sort by size, descend, or sort by size descending, and then you just sit and watch this interface and the cool stuff just scrolls in. So. I am releasing it. This is my first GitHub repository ever, my first piece of public committed code I published on Monday. So that's cool. Uh, it's online. Take it, steal it, hack it, break it, do whatever. Um, a friend of mine, Paul, who is hiding in the audience, basically took that script and the same day I published my first GitHub repo, 
rewrote it, made it better, and he's designing it so that you can spin up 500 cloud instances and say go, and you can screenshot everything. So that's cool. So maybe, maybe screenshots aren't what you want to do. Maybe you want to own everything instead. So there's a, another script that I have, which unfortunately I forgot to put the link up for, but um, you can take the results out of, say you're doing a pen test, right? Say your client has asked you, we want you to look at everything we own, go nuts, don't, you know, no holds barred, here's your get out of jail card, I hope you're insured. Um, you, let's say you need to scan a slash 16. Um, you can scan the slash 16 and directly pipe the results from Shodan right into Armitage with one go. You, you edit your script, you put your query in, you hit go, all the, all the data goes back, you hit control A, own everything, go, and just watch the shells fall in. It's good. So safaris can be dangerous, but the best offense, or the best defense is a good offense, right? So who works in a shop where you will be crucified if you end map without permission, or scan the outside without permission, or do anything remotely similar, Any, anybody like that? I've worked in shops like that before where under penalty of death you cannot end map without written permission from five directors and a VP. So you can get above that tree line pretty easily. Use Shodan, you're not scanning. They'll never see any scans, the IDS won't pop, you won't knock anything over. This stuff already exists. Somebody else conveniently has done the scan for you. Awesome, how many people will, will I was surprised when the organization I was working at was running EC2 instances and had websites running elsewhere that IT and security had no knowledge that were there. So what kind of risk are you, what kind of risk do you incur as a business when people within the business are circumventing the system to put up marketing fluff and using shared passwords or putting up um, sensitive stuff on an EC2 instance and nobody knows the EC2 instance exists. So if that gets owned somehow, because um, you know, <laughs> nobody's looking, um, what happens when, when that makes the news and they go to your organization and your organization said, we have no fucking idea what that is or where it came from. That's gonna look awesome. Um, so there's some cool new features in Shodan. Um, you can search by org. Like it will do Aaron style lookups. Like you can do org colon blah and it will find everything that has blah in it, which is really handy. Um, you can do city, city, country, state, and net will you can do by site or address blocks. So it turns out we're kind of always on Safari, so you want to keep those helmets on. Um, all my stuff is located here, and I've linked Paul's repository as well. Um, please help us hack. We're going to try and build this uh, screenshot tool out to be interesting, and maybe we can do some further research and talks on this stuff. So that's it for me. Welcome to Safari. Um, I'll let you guys go 20 minutes early. Go and have an awesome dinner. Is actually comfortable. <laughs> I should wear this to dinner. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, fine.